Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Dan Lakari. I'm helping with uh, the project around history of games. And today we're lucky to have Chris Deering, who has been an industry veteran for as long as the games have been around, working in the, for Atari in the 80s, and even brought the PlayStation to Europe in the 90s. So welcome, Chris. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Happy to be here. But the the idea of game designs really goes back to interactive books and uh, some of the industry veterans like uh e. livingstone in the uk steve jackson they go back came from board games and then interactive books so then i guess in the very earliest days there was a small memory the games were sort of arcade they were taken from the from the coin op you know uh basically uh, pac-man and and uh, pong and those kinds of games and it reminds me back to over 10 years ago when when you were still the chairman of codemasters and you were meeting with some of the the other industry leaders uh here in the west midlands to talk about what games could provide as an industry yeah and, i remember that and and the faces that uh, that were uh, it were made when you were showing the growth and not just uh, you know what, what, how well it was doing now, but what the projected growth was going to be. And this was at the at the very first big you know uh, mobile um, you know a boom uh, mm. in terms of, of games. And so I think it's funny because you look at those projections now, and they were way way underestimated. But even at that time, they seemed unbelievable that you were going to be you know tens of billions. And now it's hundreds of billions in terms of so what's, what's really, come it out. It still boggles my mind. I think some of it is in the classification. Uh, you know, game isn't the perfect word, but would say in, uh, interactive experience with an entertainment factor, uh, because sometimes surfing the internet can be an entertaining thing to do. I think it's funny because you look at those projections now, and they were way, way underestimated. But even at that time, they seemed unbelievable that you were going to be, you know, tens of billions. And now it's hundreds of billions in terms of so what's, really, what's come it up. It still boggles my mind. I think some of it is in the classification. Uh, you know, game isn't the perfect word, but it would say in, uh, interactive experience with an entertainment factor. Uh, because sometimes surfing the internet can be an entertaining thing to do. Do you believe that people will 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 move away from the screens? Do you think that 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 there's only growth in this, or do you think there's going to be some some losers or some some technology that will become obsolete, like a, a laptop or a, you know a PC game, for instance? Well, I mean, the, there was a time where the consoles depended on the TV for the screen. Uh, there was a, a side development of Game Boy, you know, in Germany, where it was considered a very un, uh, 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 naff to have uh, a game machine under the TV. That was that was something from the arcades done by the train station, where all the ne nefarious characters hung. So the Game Boy uh, was very big in places like South Korea and Germany, which are, were fanatic about children's education and not being distracted. I'm going to wrap it up there just to say thank you for your time. And, um, and I look forward to hearing about and seeing uh, the, the, your prognosis, prognosis and the, the prophecies that you've talked about.